Hello everyone, welcome to Clark, the official showroom and test kitchen for Sub-Zero Wolf & Cove products. Today we're going to be making some pot pie, so I already have all my ingredients all meased out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my pot to a medium high heat. I first like to start off with the drippings from my chicken. So I just roasted off some chicken breast with just some oil, salt and pepper. And then since those pan drippings have so much flavor, I always start with that. And then to that, I'm also going to add one stick of butter. So what we're doing to start is we're going to be creating a roux. So roux is a basic thickening agent for classical sauces and things like that. So we're going to just melt this butter down. And then a roux is classified by equal parts butter and flour. So once this butter is nice and melted, we're going to go ahead and add equal parts flour. So this is about four tablespoons of butter. So we're going to add to this about four tablespoons of flour. And I'm not going to add all the flour at once. I want to make sure that I'm not adding too much. Perfect. So you want it to come together how you see here. So right now it really is almost like a fun little Play-Doh. So we want to let this cook for about a minute or so, so it kind of cooks off some of that flour flavor. Perfect. And now we're going to slowly pour in some chicken broth. So I add about half a cup at a time. And then before I make the next addition, I'm going to whisk this until it's kind of one mixture, and then I'm going to allow it to come to a boil before I allow any more liquid into the pan. This is going to make sure it stays nice and smooth and none of the flour clumps up. There we go, so now that's thickening up right. So now we're going to add about another half a cup of liquid. And just keep on doing that until you have the consistency that you want for your chicken pot pie filling. I also like to take a spatula and run it along the sides to make sure none of that flour is hanging out in any of the corners of your pan. And then right back to whisking. Now the third time we can add a little bit more because it's going to stay nice and smooth. And you want to again make sure you're getting into all the little nooks and crannies of your pan. So a spatula will do that much better than your whisk will. Perfect, and then once this comes to a boil, we'll be able to add all of our extra fillings. But first, I'm going to start with some dried thyme. And I'm also going to give it a little bit of salt and pepper. There we go. We just want to let this come to a boil because once it spoils, you'll see the true consistency of how thick the brothiness will be. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and start adding some of our extra veggies. So this is where you can get a little bit creative. So what we have today is some peas and carrots. And what's great about pot pies is you can use leftovers, you can use whatever you have in your fridge, or you can even use things like canned or frozen vegetables. So there really is no rhyme or reason, but peas and carrots are always popular. I also have some little baby potatoes that I par cooked in our steam oven. So I just turned it on to the steam mode at 210 degrees. And then I also gave them a little chop in half. So we're going to add that to the bowl as well. Perfect. And finally, we're going to add some chicken. So again, you can either use fresh chicken, you can use leftover chicken. If you have a rotisserie chicken, you can just shred that up and add it in. I don't think I'm going to need all this chicken today. 
but I can use it for leftover salads and things like that as well. There we go. So we have a nice hearty chicken pot pie base right there. So now we're just going to reduce this down to a simmer and go ahead and get started on our pie crust. So first I'm going to fill up some of these smaller little individual pot pies. Making sure it has a good mixture of chicken and veg and potato and enough sauce. So we're going to want to fill these right up to the brim so that the pie crust doesn't sink down when we're baking it. Perfect. Last one. Actually, I want to save all of this for our larger pot pie as well. So now with these two, I'm going to take some pre-rolled pie dough that I made this morning. But like I said, you can really use anything from pre-made pie dough, homemade pie dough, and even the little tins of crescent rolls as well, or even biscuits to just kind of switch it up a little bit, add a different flavor, and make dinner extra easy. So we just want to get a nice seal all around the top. Again, just sealing this right around the top. Even though we just worked so hard to seal this nicely around the top, we are going to give it a couple ventilation holes. So I can even just take this spatula right here I'm just going to give it a nice little vent hole right in the center. Then with some extra pie dough, I made little pie crust chickens. So I'm going to add that right on top. So I find that these smaller pot pies tend to brown really nicely without any added egg wash or cream on top just the convection mode will do its job nicely and speaking of we're going to turn that on right now so we're going to go on to convection at 325 degrees and then from there we're also going to fill up our larger pot pie some people like to do a double crust pot pie that's completely up to you and your preference. If you are doing a double crust pot pie, I recommend instead of using the convection mode to use the bake mode. So with the bake mode, a majority of the heat's coming from the bottom of the oven. So what that's going to do is it's, is it's going to ensure that that bottom pie crust is nice, nicely baked. If you've ever had a pie that doesn't like to release from the pie pan, it's usually because that bottom pie crust hasn't been baked enough. So once the bottom pie crust is baked enough, it will release from the pan naturally without you having to take a spatula to it. So again, same thing with this pot pie. We want it nice and filled to the brim so that the pie crust doesn't dip down while it's, while it's baking. Perfect, so now we're going to get the pie crust on this one. So here we're just going to plop this right on top. It's okay if there are little tears that will just help with venting. I like to give it a little bit of a fold underneath the lip. And then you can do any sort of decorative design around the edge that you like. So for me, I like to take one thumb and then two knuckles and I'll press my thumb in between those two knuckles and then rotate the pie dish around. And that gives me a pretty little crimp. Or you could skip this step altogether if you want a more rustic looking pot pie. With this one, we'll want to vent the same. I'll give it four smaller vent holes around the center. So we're going to try something a little new. We're going to take a little stencil that we use to make our little pie crust chickens and we're going to take it, place it directly over the center and with a little bit of flour, we're going to dust it right on top. 
we're going to gently lift up. Perfect, so now we have a nice little flour chicken right in the center, and we're going to go ahead and pop these into our oven. So because we're on the convection mode, the whole oven is one even oven temperature, from top to bottom, from back to front. So it doesn't matter where I place these on the racks or if I place them onto a specific rack. Because the convection fan system will ensure that they're all getting even heat. So now we want to bake these until the tops are nice and golden brown. Everything inside's already cooked to the correct temperature. So once everything's golden, we're good to go. And I'm going to set a timer for about 25 minutes. Alrighty, there's our timer. Let's check on our pot pies. Looking good. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and grab a cake stand. Now we'll slide our pie right on there. Be careful, it's nice and hot. And there we have it, a chicken pot pie. That can be customized and made easier with whatever you please. And you can also make this vegetarian by just switching the chicken stock to vegetable stock and foregoing the chicken itself. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day.